What is going on everybody? Welcome back and I hope your summer is going absolutely awesome and you wanted a 10 millimeter so I got you a 10 millimeter and that is going to be the XDM Elite in the way of that 10 millimeter that people have kept asking me for to test and compare two different things. So it's been said that the 45 is the Lord's caliber so my question is the 10 millimeter, the Holy Spirit's millimeter. I don't know. Discuss down below and let me know what your thoughts are on that. Well, now that you know what we are going to be talking about today in the way of that XDM Elite 10 millimeter from Springfield Armory, let's pay the bills real quick with some help from Tac Pack. If you don't know what Tac Pack is, it is a monthly subscription box where you can get everything from a hatchet to cleaning kits to coffee cups, all the things for your outdoor needs, camping, hunting, fishing, all that stuff. I've put a ton of their products to use. Uh, since I started getting those things and they are a big supporter of the channel. So check them out at tacpack.com. Use code TC. You get yourself a free tactical gift after your first month. Well, let's get right into the range footage on this one. Talk about the feel, the function, the accuracy, all that stuff you want to know. And I only got a couple hundred rounds for this thing. So just because 10 millimeter seems to be really hard to find locally right now, and it is super expensive. I've only got a couple hundred rounds for this thing right now. Usually I like to get about 500 through them before I do my initial review, but just kind of a sign of the times right now. So most of that was PMC and Magtech, uh, hollow point, jacketed hollow point ammunition. So we know it's gonna run that good stuff out there. But that's everything that was through. So out on the range, this thing's a monster. It's a 10 millimeter, not quite like a 45, but it's that next closest thing in that whole millimeter category. You know what's best about big bullets? Big holes. And since 10 millimeter is the best millimeter ever, how does it compare to the 45? I don't know because it feels much like a 45 to me. Um, honestly, you know you have something more than a nine millimeter in your hand. Does it feel really similar to the 45 to me? Absolutely, it does. And I quite like the XDMs out there on the range because they are big pistols that are easy to control and easy to run. And maybe I don't notice a big difference between the 10 and the 45 because I'm kind of holding on for dear life out there. If you haven't seen the meme that says, you know, once you fire the 10 millimeter, it's like you can't feel your legs, you can't feel your legs like that thing from X-Men but you definitely know it's something more than a nine. You get more of that recoil impulse, that felt recoil is definitely going to be more, but it's not going to be as bad as some other things out there that are maybe like smaller size pistol, but still using a larger caliber or even the 10 millimeter. Accuracy wise, these things with their match grade barrels in them are going to do everything you need them to do out there on the range. I have not seen a single issue with these as far as the accuracy goes, even when you start to press out to those longer distances. At one point with the XDM9, I think we were out to like almost 100 yards shooting with that optic uh, at a two thirds IBSIG sized plate of steel and pretty much all of us were hitting it. Uh, a couple misses here and there, but it was still very doable at 100 yards, which is kind of getting ridiculous with a pistol, but it can be done. And being that these XDMs are quite large, they're much like the P10F in the CZ category, they're a little bit easier to control and get really good hits because there's a lot more size and a lot more length to them. Uh, especially in the slide and of course that grip. The grips on these things are absolute monsters. The ergonomics on the XDMs are great. It's a much more neutral angle than some other things out there on the market and that just seems to really work for me. And the size of the thing again is just great with those better angles. You get ambidextrous mag release, ambidextrous slide stop slide release. And I find those very easy and ergonomic to get to without being intrusive or obtuse to your grip. Being that they are ambient and they're a little bit extended both on the mag release and the slide stop, some people uh, with other caliber or other pistols have had issues with accidentally activating those controls. I did not find that to be an issue on the XDM. Getting your big sausage fingers in that trigger guard is easy to do because it is much larger than some other things out there, which I appreciate might be a little big for some of you, but for me out there getting to the trigger can be a bit of a struggle, especially when you get into the compact market, which is not the case here because this is everything and more of a big stick. And that factory magwell makes your magazine exchanges, whether you're doing just a tactical exchange or an emergency or empty gun reload, slide lock, whatever you wanna call it, all same, same kind of different, makes it good. And I'm a huge fan of factory magwells because they just make your life a little bit easier. And overall out there, I found that meta trigger and I've had a couple of experiences on a couple of different pistols with it now, to be quite good. It's better than a lot of other things out there in the striker market, but maybe not quite as good as say the Walther PDP. Well, now that we have talked about that range experience, which was quite good, I had no issues, no failures to extract, failures to feed, failures to fire, not a single problem, but I was using really good ammo out there. I didn't have any basic ball or kind of lower grade or reloaded ammo. I only had 
pretty good stuff. I mean, some people may say PMC and Magtech isn't the best, but it was kind of their nicer stuff. So bear that in mind, I didn't have any real junk or steel ammo to test out here, but we need to get into those specs. We need to test those triggers. You need to know how this trigger system works because it's quite a bit different than some other things. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, let's take a good look at our XDM Elite in the 10 millimeter right here. So talk about what we're gonna get first. We'll obviously get that Springfield bag. I think everybody knows they're sending them with these this day. You're gonna get two stainless steel magazines. Yes, the magic number is three, but we get two of them. They're good mags, they're nice. They're gonna do everything you need them to do. And they're 15 rounders. So you can get, I think, extended ones that are 18. Uh, don't quote me, but I think those are going to be available. You will get the pistol, you will get your lock, your materials in there, your factory magwell right there. Uh, the optic will not come with it unless you buy the optic equipped version. Some will have it, some will not. So that is basically what you're going to get with that thing. So let's go ahead and just go over the rest of this from the magwell to the muzzle right here. So like I said, you will get that factory magwell in there. It is quite nice, got plenty of surface area if you're a little bit off on those magazine exchanges to get it right in there. Moving up from there, we've got that standard XDM texture on there. On the front, it's kind of changes. It's like a, a stacked kind of square pattern. Gets a little taller towards the front and then a little less towards the side if that's coming out for you to see. And you've got some more kind of squares and rectangles right here on the side. XDM logo and then kind of just an open area that's a little slick right there. And then the back is just a larger version of the front strap. And then obviously your pin for your interchangeable back straps that you will get as well. And again, that logo and just some information from Springfield right there. Not much to talk about other than that stuff. Up here, you're gonna have some good depression area to get the web of your hands and your palm and everything up in there right there. That way you're not gonna accidentally activate any of the controls. Ambi mag release, ambi slide release pretty standard back strap safety from the people over Springfield. A little undercut there on that trigger guard, not a double undercut, but it'll do a little bit for you to stay high on that grip. Good generous trigger guard right there. We do have that flat face meta trigger. We'll do the pulls here in a minute. Moving forward, you have your takedown lever, three slots for your lights, lasers, bayonets, and all accessories up front. Moving up into that slide, you're gonna have very nice front and rear serrations right there. I am a big fan of these. They're nice, thick serrations, get a lot of meat in there and they work just fine. Uh, you get your takedown lever. On this side, you're gonna have a couple of logos, nothing overly crazy, but standard Springfield logos on the sides and then across the top right there. Loaded chamber indicator across the top, pretty standard looking barrel and hood. You'll get that U-notch rear sight. You will also get an in battery indicator or a loaded chamber indicator right there in the back for a tactile feel should it be in the holster or you're in the dark checking to see if you got around in the chamber and that you're in battery and then you'll get that uh high vis red i think it's only in red right now i did not get a green one but a red fiber optic sight up in the front so comes equipped pretty much like just about every other xdm in the market right now is equipped so let's go ahead let's do a couple trigger presses and then we'll test the trigger out and talk about how it works. So flat trigger, shoe goes all the most, all the way flush. There's your take up, little tiny bit of creep here, and then a break. So overall pretty good, feels pretty light. There's your reset and a break. So one thing to pay attention to on these is you'll kind of hear right there. So you kind of hear a little bit of an audible click. That's the initial trigger mechanism working but that's your real set right there. That's your real reset. So some people have mistaken that before, but let's go ahead and do some pulls on the digital Wheeler trigger gauge that was supplied by a viewer some time ago. And we will do three trigger pulls and we will average them out. And I'm gonna pull at different places on the trigger shoe to give the best average. So that first one right there, hope that'll focus in. There we go, four pounds, uh, three and a half ounces. So we will enter that, do a couple more here. And I got to hold that back strap safety in, kind of a pain. Uh, that one right there, four pounds and 11 ounces. So we'll enter that. We'll pull just a little bit higher this time, right about there. 
and jumped up a little bit higher. And that's why I always tell people placement on that trigger shoe matters. So that was five pounds, 11 ounces for an overall average of this number, which is four pounds, 13.9 ounces. So not bad at all for that trigger. So your breakdown on these, you're gonna lock it back, flip up your takedown lever and it comes right apart. Standard takedown for the rest of the slide, barrel, everything comes out. On this barrel, we've got a very nicely polished feed ramp and all the way around that chamber. Hopefully it's coming out, but you can see those nice polish marks on there. Everything else in here is pretty standard. So if you've never seen the XDM before, this is going to be your extractor. It's an internal mechanism, so it doesn't show on the outside. That's your striker block safety. And then this is your lug for your striker. Remember that because we're going to talk right now about how this trigger system works. So in the meta trigger system right here, the parts you need to know and pay attention to are going to be your sear surface right there, which is that part moving up and down right here. This arm right here that moves up, that is what disconnects your striker block safety right there. So that edge that goes up and down, that's what allows the striker to move forward in the striker channel. And then obviously your trigger bar in here as you pull is going to move, push that up for the striker block, press down on that sear surface, and that gun is gonna go bang. Once it uh, starts to reciprocate on that slide, you'll see this edge right here. Okay, you see that moving back and forth. That's gonna disconnect from the trigger mechanism, and that is going to align with this notch right here in the slide. Now pay attention to that sear surface. When I activate this, you'll see it pop back up right here. I'll put it at an angle like that. You see that pops up, striker lug grabs that as the slide goes forward, and that's what resets your trigger. Put it back together, obviously just the opposite operation right here. Do your functions check and you are going to be good to go on that new 10 milli. Of course, I did not forget about those of you out there that love those detailed specs with a little bit of that elevator music. So here you go. All right, so my overall opinion here, I really like the XDM E9. I think some of you have probably seen that original video, that follow up video on the nine millimeter version of this. It's got a couple of additional options, that threaded barrel, it's got the uh, higher sights on it. I really dig that thing and I like the 10 millimeter. Now the 10 millimeter does feel quite a bit different. It's thicker in the grip. It's overall got a larger profile in length and weight, all that good stuff to kind of help control that 10 millimeter. But I do kind of notice here that this 10 millimeter maybe has a little bit more felt recoil than some other 10 millimeters I have used before. And I can't quite put my finger on what it is. It might have to do with maybe that texture of the grip. Maybe it's just not aggressive enough once I started sweating out there in the summer to really get a good solid grip around that thing and control that recoil impulse like I have been able to do on some other things when I'm not like sweating in 115 degree weather. What I will say with this 10 millimeter is you can run the crap out of this thing, much like the nine millimeter uh, smaller brother of it. It's got the controls in the right places. It's easy to run. The ergonomics are great. And you can put this thing through its paces with ease out there on the range. So if you love the 10 millimeter, or you're a 10 millimeter kind of person out there, I think you will enjoy this, but 10 millimeter seems to be an absolute pain to get. Now, if you're a 10 millimeter runner out there, I'm just curious to know what your experience is in actually finding and buying that ammo is, because for me, it sucks right now. I can't find it anywhere and I actually had to beg, borrow, and steal for the ammo that I did get for this testing. So all of that being said, all of that known, what do I like about this thing? And is there anything I would change when it comes to the new 10 millimeter XDME? All right, so a couple of things that I would change here. I think the biggest one for me is probably that grip texture, like the Hellcat. So the Pro and even the original Hellcat got that nice sandpaper style texture. I would love to see that on this version rather than what is there. Those larger kind of checkering pattern just doesn't give you the purchase that that sandpaper texture does. Or if they would blend that sandpaper texture into the smooth areas right here, I think that would be an absolute knockout and it would really help control that recoil impulse just a little bit better. 
And the only other thing I could think of, and this is really gonna be nitpicking, is the magazine release here. So it's a good size, it's in a good place, but I think this frame is overall big enough that we could get something the size of, say, the Walther PDP magazine release in there, and then it just puts it in a perfect spot where you don't even have to like really break your grip at all to activate it, and you get a nice positive feel. So it's good, but it could be maybe about one and a half times the size that it is right now. And I have two huge positives here, the first one being that magwell. I absolutely love when pistols come from the factory with a magwell because they just make your life so much easier. The second huge positive for me is just the size of this thing. Look at the size of the grip on that thing. It's awesome, it's like the P10F. It's a lot of meat to get your hands on and you can have a ton of fun with this and it helps control the recoil just a little bit more than if it were smaller, lighter, thinner, all that stuff that you should expect. You put some weight in it and you get a little bit better of a feeling out on the range. I probably think most of you guys out there know that. And sometimes you just want to pull the big stick out of the safe, go out, have some fun on the range and do like the Ash thing from Evil Dead and be like, this is my boomstick. I'm really curious what your thoughts are on that 10 millimeter XDME because it seems to be some people are fanatical about the 10 millimeter, much like people that some would call boomers are fanatical about the 45 or Colt revolvers that were named after snakes or something. So no offense there because I love me some 45 and I would actually like to have an OG Python just because they're kind of cool. Well, that is what I have for you all today. Make sure you do all the things the algorithm wants, which is sub, like, share, turn on the bell notification, and definitely leave me a comment down below on what you think about the 10 millimeter XDME from Springfield. That really does help the channel. If you're interested in supporting me in any other way, you can check out all those affiliate links down below or check the Patreon out, all that stuff does help the channel. I guess the only thing that's left to say is pull out your big stick, go to the range and have some fun. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. I will see you all on the next one.